Good morning, deeply loved children of God, and welcome to worship at Emmanuel Lutheran Church. I am Pastor Maureen Howard, and I greet you with great joy as we come together to give God thanks and praise on this gorgeous Sunday morning. A couple of announcements that we have here at Emmanuel Lutheran is that we extend our deepest Christian sympathies to April 6 and her family on the death of her grandpa, Dick Davidson. We will lift up uh, Dick in the prayers of the saints this morning. And so, April, may you know our deepest Christian sympathy and our love go to you as your grandpa has left this world to the world eternal to be with Christ forever. Also next Sunday, which is August 2nd, hard to believe that uh, we're going to be in August already, <laughs> already, um, will be another worship on the East Lawn at 7 p.m. We'll continue to have our live stream 9 a.m. worship where it will just be three of us in the sanctuary and then a 7 o'clock evening service next Sunday, 8, uh, August 2nd. So put that down on your calendars as well, and that evening service is at 7 p.m., and masks and social distancing are required. Our worship liturgy, uh, our bulletin, is found at our website, which is luthwash.org, L-U-T-H-W-A-S-H.org, and you may download it under the July Bulletin tab. Well, let us prepare our, mind, our hearts and minds for worship. We begin with the liturgy. Hear God's love. We hear God's love for the world and for us through forgiveness, scripture, preaching, liturgy, and song. Hear God's love. Holy God, open our ears to hear and our hearts to be transformed by Christ's words of love to and for the world. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us now live in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us together sing our gathering hymn, number 512, Lord, let my heart be good soil. Oh, 
Celebration. of your Son, you bring us into your kingdom of justice and mercy. By your Spirit, give us your wisdom, that we may treasure the life that comes from Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us now hear the word of God through Scripture. Our first reading is from 1 Kings, chapter 3, verses 5 through 12. 
A reading from 1 Kings. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love, and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David. Although I am only a little child, I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people, so numerous they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil. For who can govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, Because you have asked this, and have not asked for yourself long life or riches, or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you, and no one like you shall arise after you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is Psalm 119, verses 129 through 136. Your decrees are wonderful, therefore I obey them with all my heart. When your word is opened, it gives light, it gives understanding to the simple. I open my mouth and pant because I long for your commandments. Turn to me and be gracious to me, as you always do to those who love your name. Order my footsteps in your word. Let no iniquity have dominion over me. Rescue me from those who oppress me, and I will keep your commandments. Let your face shine upon your servant and teach you your statutes. My eyes shed streams of tears because people do not keep your teaching. Our second reading from Romans chapter 8, verses 26 to 39. A reading from Romans. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that every spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies, who is to condemn. It is Christ Jesus who died, Yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, 
nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Let us together sing the gospel acclamation. comes to us from St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air can make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until it was all leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys this field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls and finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it to shore, sat down, and put the good into baskets and threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all of this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out his treasure, what is new and what is old. The gospel of our Lord Praise is to you. Lord They've entered the forest. The canopy encloses in on them making it dark. Overgrowth is now encroaching upon the once bright yellow brick road. Little Toto offers no security as he follows behind. Dorothy becomes frightened and turns to the tin man. Do you suppose will meet any wild animals? We might. Animals that eat straw, inquires the scarecrow. Some, but mostly lions and tigers and bears. Lions, tigers, and bears. In a terrified voice, Dorothy cries, Lions and tigers and bears, oh my! Isn't that what we're exclaiming ourselves today? At the beginning of a new year, 
2020. We were following the bright yellow brick road to our own versions of the Emerald City. Then the road became overgrown and we found ourselves in a darkened forest, frightened by the roar of COVID-19. Shutdowns, reopenings too quickly, unemployment, social distancing, quarantines, the mask wearing confrontations. Is it a personal freedom lost? You can't make me wear a mask. Or is it a moral social action wearing a mask out of love and compassion for our neighbors? Large social gatherings, school opening dilemmas, deaths, refrigerated morgues, exhausted healthcare workers. We're frightened by the roar of George Floyd's murder. Black Lives Matter widespread protests demanding for racial justice, mostly peaceful, others not. Tear gas, looting, unrest. A photo op at St. John's Episcopal Church. Defund the police. Federal agents moving into cities and capital cam and campaign ads instilling fear. In terrified voices, we too cry out, lions and tigers and bears, oh my! Jesus continues to sit in a boat teaching the crowds, people who know the strong, oppressive arm of federal agents, the Roman military, teaching people who know what living on a shoestring looks like since 80% of first century Palestine lived a survival existence. Jesus is teaching people who know the art of caring for community members, where unrestrained individualism isn't even a concept. Jesus is looking into their eyes, people who are hungry for change, hungry for hope. And Jesus says, the kingdom of heaven is like an invasive weed, the mustard shrub, that starts out so small, seemingly insignificant, that you wouldn't even give it a second look, yet inescapably grows while taking over everything. And with outstretched branches provides protection for the weak and the vulnerable, the birds of the air, looking nothing like the majestic beauty of the cedars of Lebanon or the United States national tree, the mighty oak which portray the power and strength of the empire, society, systems, and policies. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven, an agent spreading its unseen influence 
its hidden power transform throughout the dough. Yet, unlike COVID-19 virus, which is hidden from us and also has the ability to transform the dough, the world it mixes through, the leaven Jesus refers to is God's inaugurated. It's God's inaugurated transformation to come into those scary, dark forests of our lives and transform it into God's abundant goodness. And as any baker knows, leaven needs time to work. And with the kingdom of heaven's invasive mustard seed planted into the womb of a virgin named Mary, God started as an infant, a dismissible child, grew into the largest of all the plants, invading the manicured landscape of the temple's elites, self-righteous, hypocritical, merciless, and narrow-minded ways, and the Roman government's oppressive rule. God was infesting the landscape, spreading, growing deep, and wide, providing a safe haven for all who needed refuge. Jesus the weed, Jesus the mustard seed, continues to invade the manicured landscapes of today's society's status quo, becoming an annoying presence as Jesus' way, the kingdom of heaven's way, slowly takes root while being a beacon to those in need. We, Jesus' disciples, engulfed by a dark forest, crying out, lions and tigers and bears, oh my! Fear is the operative word for us here and now. Jesus is sitting in a boat, firing parable after parable in quick succession to a people in fear. Jesus, the mustard tree, has his branches spread out in the midst of the forest so that those who are fearful and vulnerable may climb in and find respite and hope. As Jesus is offering protection, Jesus is also dropping seeds, planting more invasive trees, you and me, to grow and disrupt the manicured landscapes of hate, injustice, brutality, self-absorption, and discrimination. Though our work of love, acceptance, and caring for all people may seem small and insignificant, though our efforts may be frustrating, and see little progress. God, the leaven, is working hidden within the dough that we need. God, the leaven, is working to transform creation, transform relationships, transform worldviews. And in time, we will see the grand outcome God has planned.
planned. Jesus, as leaven, cannot be removed once it's in the dough. God is unmovable, removable. God is unremovable from us. And no force, no emotion, no event, no situation, nothing can separate us from God dwelling in and with us. Just as weeds keep returning, no matter how much herbicide or plucking you do, even weed eradication by nailing Jesus to the cross, the mustard seed, Jesus, and Jesus' mission cannot be stopped. And the ferocious roar of the lion, tiger, and bear will be transformed into purrs. For the inevitable power of God's kingdom will transform fear into faith, hate into love, force into humility, discrimination into equality. And to our joy, we will discover that God's kingdom of heaven is the fulfillment of God's deepest desires for you, me, and the world. Amen. Let us together sing the hymn of the day, number one, uh, number 715. Let us sing the refrain after the odd-numbered verses.
God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, let us confess our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. After the conclusion of each prayer petition, I will say, hear us, O God, and ask that you respond with, your mercy is great. Merciful God, your reign is revealed to us in common things. A mustard shrub, a woman baking bread, a fishing net. Help your church witness to the surprising yet common ways you encounter us in daily life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. When your word is opened, it gives light and understanding. Increase our understanding and awe of your creation. Guide the work of scientists and researchers. Treasuring the earth, may we live as grateful and healing caretakers of our home. Grant comfort and healing to those affected by all disasters so they may come to know new life through you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. As the birds of the air nest in branches of trees, Gather the nations of the world into the welcoming shade of your merciful reign. Direct leaders of nations to build trust with each other and to walk in the way of peace. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Your spirit helps us in our weakness and intercedes for the saints according to your will. Help us when we do not know how to pray. Give comfort to the dying, refuge to the weary, justice to those who are oppressed, and healing to the sick, especially those who are suffering from COVID-19. And grant us the desire to show love and respect to our neighbors. May a vaccine be readily available to all people. Grant courage and strength to the healthcare professionals, and especially for those we name before you now, in our hearts or spoken out loud. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You show steadfast love and direct us to ask of you what we need. Help your people worshiping as Emmanuel Lutheran to ask boldly for what is most needed. Refresh us with new dreams of being your people. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In you our lives are never lost. Strengthen us by the inspiring witness of your people in all times and places. Embolden our witness now, and one day gather us with all your saints in light, especially Dick Davidson. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O oh God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. Let us share the peace of Christ with one another and also with you. 
The peace of Christ be with you. During this time of social distancing, we continue to give God our thanks and praise through our tithes and offerings of thanksgiving for the mission of the church, including the care of those in need. I invite you to mail your offerings to Emmanuel Lutheran. Sign up for automatic withdrawal called Simply Giving or go to Emmanuel Lutheran's website, luthwash.org, and give online. At this time, we will receive your gifts. pray. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours and your faithfulness as firm as the heavens. Water and word, wine and bread, these are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. Let us give thanks for God's life-giving word. After each prayer of thanksgiving, I will conclude for your word of life, O oh God. And I ask that you respond with, we give you thanks and praise. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word, you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. O oh God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, awaken us to the needs of others, deepen our love, and at the end, bring all the world to your feast through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Deeply loved children of God, you are loved 
You are treasured and you are honored in the sight of God. And God will never leave you because you are wanted by God. Receive God's blessing. Christ has no body but yours, no hands, no feet on earth, but yours. Yours are the eyes in which he looks compassion on this world. Yours are the hands in which he blesses all this world. Yours are the feet in which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands, yours are the feet, yours are the eyes. You are Christ's body. Christ has no body now on earth but yours. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Let us together sing our sending hymn, number 546, To Be Your Presence. Thank you. 